Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth. Welcome back to Coding Shorts. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. It really does help me. On to our topic. Today we're going to be talking about Tailwind CSS. It's a library and utility that helps you create your designs for web applications or PWAs or whatever you're doing with CSS. Well, this coding short can't really cover all the details of how Tailwind works. There are courses and a bunch of other resources for that. I want to take this chance to really talk to you about why Tailwind CSS is important and different from other libraries like Bootstrap. Hopefully I'm going to change your mind about how it works and to show you how at first glance it may seem like a terribly bad idea. But after you start working with it, you're going to be able to work much, much more quickly. Let's get started. So let's get into it. I think Tailwind CSS is a different sort of project than something like Bootstrap or other projects like it in that it's a utility-based class. And I think there's some confusion out there in the community what that really means. And so let's sort of dig into it. We're gonna start with just an index.html file I have here. It's pretty simple. And it's just a mock-up without any styling of my sort of blog page. So if we go to wildermuth.com, you can see this is just the blog I have. There's a left section. There's sort of a body section. Of course, always subscribe to the updates. And we want to make this sort of work in the kinds of things we're doing. And so let's come over here and let's go ahead and add Tailwind. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually just create a new CSS file. So I'm going to create a new file in CSS and I'll call it our site.css. And in here, we're going to want a couple of weird things that you're not going to be used to. These are about Tailwind. And the first one is going to be Tailwind base. Tailwind components and Tailwind utilities. And of course, the editor is going to be confused about these because these rules aren't keywords that CSS knows about at all. Because what we're really going to do here is we're going to use Tailwind. And for now, we're not even going to install it locally. I have Node on my machine, and that's going to be required. But we're going to use NPX to call Tailwind CSS. And we're going to just give it an input of CSS site.css, and we're going to give it an output of CSS final.css. And this is going to take this file and it's going to output a CSS file that we'll actually use on our page that has all those utilities with it. You need to install this package, and so we're going to say yes, and it's going to install it for now just in the global package manager. That's how NPX sort of works. It gives us this sort of temporary file. You see it took quite a while to do it, and let's open up this final, and we will see initially it's enormous. This is one of the big complaints that a lot of people have is the CSS utilities are gigantic, 188,000 lines of code. That is a lot of code. We'll come back to why that's not what you're really gonna be dealing with, but let's start by just adding it here to our page. And we're just going to say CSS final, because that's what we're actually going to load in on the page. If we go back and refresh, we'll see that all those sort of headers and footers have been completely reset. And that's part of the philosophy here, though you can turn that off. I don't have time in a coding short to show you, but I have an article that I'll link in the notes that you can see much more details of how to do things like turning off, resetting of all the CSS and such. And the way that this works now that we have it is there's going to be classes. It's all really class-based to say we want to do certain things. And so here in the HTML, I'm going to have three sections, a main, a header, and a side. And these represent places that I really want to be on the left and the center and the right. Or from your perspective, the left, the center, and the right. And so I'm going to start by just adding a class here called BG, let's say, blue, 800. And this is going to be a class that tells it I want it to be blue and I want it to be the intensity of 800, which is fairly large because it goes 50 and then by hundreds, it goes 100, 200, up to 900. And I'll copy the same thing and I'll make this one yellow. 
and I'll make this one gray. Let's see if that's a correct spelling of gray. I always get the, the wrong one first. So we can now see we're getting that dark blue, that sort of orange, which is a dark yellow, believe it or not. And then we have this gray background, though. It looks like I misspelled it. Now it's that dark gray, right? And so at the beginning, we can see this our first sort of classes that are allowing us to do this. And we could do this pretty simply with some other things, but let's make this a little prettier. Let's make this one yellow and about 500. And this one we're gonna actually make white. And this one we'll go ahead and make gray, maybe 300. And if you have the right plugins installed, you'll get IntelliSense for this as well, but we're not quite there. So there we have kind of a yellow, and kind of a gray on this side, and then white in this whole section. So background colors, simple ideas here. You also have the idea of, let's say, making this a flex container. And let's say flex, actually, we don't need to say flex columns because that's by default. Now we can see we're starting to get that look. It's automatically sort of made this to be as wide as we want. We're starting to get sort of the basics of what we want our page to be. And so similar to Bootstrap, but also interestingly, is we can also add padding and margin here. So let's add a padding of about two, and we'll see that two, when we look at it, actually represents half of an EM. So every number in any of these definitions here is going to point at an REM value, and those values are gonna be a quarter of per number. So we'll get one, two, three, et cetera. So we have a pretty good flexibility there. We'll put padding in there of two as well and we'll put it in the bottom one. In fact, let's make that one padding four. We have a little bit more space. And when we we'll refresh, we can start to see the padding is giving us some of that room. And so we can see the two is not much there. Let's focus on styling the center section. And most importantly, you'll notice that the blog is small and that the other elements here are all pretty plain. So let's start by just styling that H1. And we can do that with text LG for large. And we can see that's a little larger, but not really as large as we want. Let's do 4XL, which tells it to be much bigger. Let's also say font bold, all right? We can start to see that we're getting some of the behavior we really want here. Let's go ahead and also say font serif which tells that we want a different one of the default fonts. And right now we're not including any fonts, it's just using some defaults. And so there, these stay all sans serif, and there we have a serif font. And it's starting to look good, but we'll notice that down here we're using an H2. And so let's sort of copy the same thing down here. So let's make this, let's say 2XL, right? And so some of the complaints about the way that Tailwind work is this. How is this any better than just doing style, right? And putting those same elements in. And if you leave it this way, it's not. It just simply isn't. What Tailwind does for me is allows me to prototype really quickly with these same ideas. So if we simply take this and apply it and copy and paste it everywhere, of course it's gonna be awful. But instead, let's go over to that site CSS, and I can do something called layer, and this helps me know which layer to put it in. So is it gonna be after base, after components, or after utilities? If I just put this in without layer, it'll just show up at the end of the file, or if I put it here, it'll end up inside here. Layer is really important when you wanna segment this into multiple files, but we're not quite there yet. So let's start with a simple without a layer and say H1, we want to apply the same design idea that we have here. So let's copy all of this and let's use the magic at apply. And app apply is the magic of Tailwind as far as I'm concerned. This is where everything works. At apply allows me to prototype it and then quickly put it in these, right? And if I do that, and just take this out, right? Because I'm creating a rule for H1 and I'm taking that design idea I had for H1 and I'm applying it here. In fact, let's make one for two as well. Remember we said two is XL and we can continue to use these by sharing them like we would when we write normal CSS, right? H1, H2, at apply. So we're using those same semantics, those same instincts we have about CSS, but not having to worry about the pixel perfectness of it. 
Tailwind is giving us sort of a design platform, a, a foundation that we can build on without having to worry about that. And so if we go back to the terminal, let's rerun this again. While it's running, let's get rid of this class as well. And if we come back here and refresh, we'll see that all of the H1s and H2s are now applied with that same philosophy that we created, right? Big, big, smaller, small. And so while I often will have Tailwind ideas here that are, I'll have Tailwind classes here that may be one-offs, like putting the background color, I'm never gonna really apply this because this is a one-off on my page or in my application. I will, in other places, just use classes, IDs, or element names to decide what they really should look like. And that, to me, is, is a big win. But we have a couple of other things going. Let's talk about sort of the quick prototype I'm talking about. So here I have a div with three stories, and right now they're just enormous, right? And so how would I go about changing this? So let's go ahead and say class grid here, and I'll add grid calls four. So I want four columns. In fact, I'll say three columns. We can come back and see what our site looks like. It's already created those three columns for us. And then we can create a class here to see how we want to do this. So let's first say border, padding, let's say two all around, and let's give ourselves a little margin between them. And so let's say we could say left or right, but we can all see X for the left and right side. And let's make that four. And let's add a class here for image and say, rounded as well. In fact, yeah, border, we don't want that rounded. Rounded and shadow. And we can start to see that take shape for each of these, but notice it's not happening for all of them. And let's just come down here and say class margin left two, just to move them in a little. Text large, because I want them to be a little larger. Let's actually move this in so it's a little even further in. Notice that the text and stuff is smaller, but that's larger. And let's go MY here of one, just to give us a little space top and bottom, or I could just say B for bottom here, just to give ourselves a little space there. And that's a decent look for what I want. And so now that I have those, I'm gonna translate this over to the site, just like we did before, right? I'm gonna create a class called a story block, and I'm gonna add apply this border, because I'm gonna replace this with story block as a name. So I'm gonna apply those, and then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say story block image, and this will be add apply what we did before, rounded shadow dot story block UL for that little list there. And of course I could give these all class names and subclass names, however you wanted to do it, but here I'm gonna say apply and what did I do here? I just said ML. And then all I need to do is I can get rid of all these classes. So my text remains relatively clear. And then I just need to put that story block in all these divs. And this allowed me to figure out the what I want for the look and then quickly apply it to all of those objects. So if I run the build again, one of the interesting things you'll see here, as you can see it, I'll apply that same look and feel across them just like you'd expect it to, right? You even do mouse overs and such. So let's actually make one more change here, which I didn't talk about, where this notion of states in Tailwind is very interesting. And so I'm just gonna say hover background gray 200. Notice it has this thing that is so, it's a modifier for what we want to actually do with this notion of called states. So if we run it again, and we can do this with a watch, and I'll talk a bit about in a moment, of why you would want to do this. And you might want to install this not globally, but you might want to include it in the project as well. That would be much more common, but for time, I'm not going to really do it. So now when we hover, that hover tag is just giving us that behavior that we talked about, that we want the th something to happen when we hover. And it supports a handful, not every single property, but a handful of different classes that it can apply or unapply for you. It's got that built in via CSS, because remember all this is happening in CSS, there's no JavaScript in it at all. And so let's talk about one last thing, and that is this idea of responsiveness. Now, a lot of other frameworks have responsiveness, of course, built in, and they have different classes so you can sort of define it, but they use these same modifiers that we used with Hover, 
except they're the breakpoints. And so if I say when it's small, because again, it's mobile first, I want it to be one, but let's say at medium colon, right? Four breakpoints, five breakpoints in our case, extra small, which is without any modifier, small, medium, large, extra large. And so medium grid calls two, large, and I won't do it for everyone, but calls three, right? With that in mind, just open this up a little so we can go ahead and make it smaller. You can notice it's one when it's extra small, two when it's small, but smaller than medium, and then it becomes three, and three continues for all the other sizes that we didn't define. And so these modifiers become an easy way for us to think about applying the same class, but responsibly. So two more things to talk about. One is, that's all great, Sean, but I'm not going to ship this enormous file. In fact, if we ls CSS, if we look at the size, we can see that it's nearly four megs in size, right? Way too big, way too big, for, especially for this really simple site. And one of the ways you can get away from that is if you add some configuration. And so let's go ahead and do the work of actually getting it added. So I'm going to do npm init y so that we can get a packages.json file. And this should have nothing in it, right? Just has the sort of default. And I'm going to go npm install tailwind CSS. And now I can call tailwind without having to call the npx because it's installed locally, right? CSS init. And that's gonna generate me a Tailwind configuration file. This is where we can do some modifications of the way it works, but the only one we really want right now in the current version is purge, though this name is about to change. What we really wanna say is give it a list of things to look for because what Tailwind is gonna do is scan your project, in this case, I'm just using plain HTML, so we get away with that blob. And it will then, when it builds it, it will purge them. And so two things are gonna happen here. I can now say, let's go into the package.json. I'm gonna create a script for CSS build. And I'm gonna call tailwind CSS, just like I did before, input of CSS site. Output of CSS final. And here I'm going to say dash W for watch. And then I'm going to add dash dash JIT. This is an experimental feature in the latest version of Tailwind, but should become a final feature. I've noticed that's a tiny bit buggy and I have to restart it occasionally, but for the most part, it does the right thing. And what are these going to do with that configuration file? When I go, npm run build took 188 milliseconds to build, right? Much better than the eight or nine seconds it initially took. What's more important is our final CSS is just 700 lines now. It's way smaller because what has it done? It's included only the files that we actually need. And a majority of this, in fact, all the way down to, to here, which is line 500 of 700, is actually all those CSS resets, which we could turn off as well and make it even smaller if we didn't want to have to build up our whole project from scratch. And so what Tailwind is giving us, in my opinion, is a way for us to quickly prototype by using classes instead of having to use pure CSS. It makes it easier to add classes even in the web tools that will allow us to prototype even further. And then the trick is using apply as well as using purge through the jitter or even the old method, which also did a release builds with the same structure of parsing it out. And remember that this parsing out or this purging, this can be any files that have HTML that it can look through. And that's an important idea. And you can program it to automatically include certain classes. Let's say you're building something where there's user content. So it really can't create the file because of that. You can go ahead and opt them into always putting these individual classes or even these sections of classes, these um, modules of classes in your file every time in case you need something more elaborate. But this is why it's hugely different. It does mean there's a build step and that is a problem for some people. But overall, I think, I think this is the right way to go. If you've gotten this far, thanks for watching the whole thing. 
Of course, like and subscribe. You can also see my Pluralsight videos at Sean Link. That's Sean, S-H-A-W-N-L dot I-N-K slash P-S author. Thanks for joining me and see you next time on Coding Shorts.